Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. I'll hold this mic and then you two have got trade content. I've got an idea and I've had this idea for a long time. I want to do a podcast called Sauna Sessions, right? So Sauna Sessions. And you do the podcast in the sauna and like there's no set time. That's a bit weird. That is a, is a bit... I, 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 I second. Why? I'll give him the mic as well. Why? <laughs> Cheers. Why is it weird? Is that with touching tips? Yeah. <laughs> Why is it weird? Because we're about to get in the sauna. Yeah, but like in our bookies. I mean is like, and the length of the podcast is how long you can stay in the sauna. <laughs> if someone nicks this idea called sauna session, I'm quite good at saunas, you know. That sounds really seedy. No, but do you know what? Let's okay, okay. Well, let's let's start looking at immediate problems that uh, sound, cameras, first and foremost. No, no, heat. Yeah, that's still heat. It's still hot. It's gonna still. Yeah, no, they can melt the camera. Trust me. No, it won't. We got special cameras. You got what? Well, oh, Matchroom got um special four K cameras, two hundred degrees height proof. Yeah, height proof. Height proof. That means you can drop them from a high height and I'm they're proof of that. Away. Anyway, you get on with your IFL interview. I'm over here with. Uh, what is it? Something. What is it called over there now? <laughs> it's not even called that. It's called Tracy Beaker. Next time, will we do this? You ready? Unbelievable. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. I'm here with the man himself, Sonny Edwards. Sonny, before we talk about the business side and when you're fighting next and all this sort of stuff, I never knew you. You were the real Spider-Man, mate. What's going on there? Hey, quickly before... Sorry to interrupt you. Quickly. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. Can I... With these interviews, do I say or not say? Don't say. Okay, then. Because I said... No news. All I said is you we have no... We have no news. <laughs> when we were outside, we agreed to fight. But but things have changed since the Spider-Man outfit. Yeah, a lot has changed. A lot has That's changed. That's why he kicked off. The numbers have gone up. Sorry, because oh, they do bigger numbers. Because this is the bigger numbers, yeah. This is the proper Whoa. channel. That's the Make-A-Wish uh, YouTube yeah. channel over there. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. There's massive fights out there. Okay, so there's no, we can't talk about fights just now when what's, what's uh, on the pipeline for you, but we can say that there's a big fight gonna happen I can't say anything apparently <laughs> blink twice if a big fight's happening <laughs> uh, sorry just talking about the Brandon Scott thing this whole Spider-Man one thing I would never put Sonny Edwards down to is to dress up as Spider-Man in a, in a press conference that is definitely a first for me really I mean two fights ago I was literally dressed as Spider-Man walking to the ring so well, right, so you were shit I mean a press conference then <laughs> uh, if anything it's the natural progression really <laughs> Brandon Scott always comes up with these mad, mad sort of ideas at press conferences. It's entertainment for the fans, and and uh, he does get people talking. And yeah, you you've dis decided in your own way to work well alongside Brandon with Lee, and you you work with a lot of fighters. You help a lot of fighters out when it comes to sparring and getting fights and stuff like that. But Brandon Scott's a unique fighter in that sense. But he can fight as well. Yeah, I might have to start saying no. I think <laughs> I ain't got no free time left. And I'm getting booked for press conferences dressed as Spider-Man without getting paid. It's crazy right now. Um, but yeah, Brandon's a, a fighter actually that I first uh, was in contact with. When I was someone you shouldn't have stopped and asked for a picture. I'll be real. I was think two, three, four, and oh maybe um, as a pro. Brandon was a young amateur up and coming from Wales, and he was at one of my brother's fights. He was speaking to me, asked me for a picture, and then fast forward however many years, I think it might have been six years, five, five years, I'm doing his corner on in the same hotel that we bumped into each other and on the AJ undercard. And yeah, since then, um, we've been uh, you know, in contact and I don't know, he had the, the, the brain idea. Obviously, I work quite closely with Lee and with uh, all of my fighters pretty much that I work with. Um, so yeah, uh, Lee reached out, him and Brandon have been speaking and they wanted, well, Brandon thought that. I'd, now I know why though. It makes sense now. You know? well, explain. Well, I've earned my money today, ain't I? I'm saying that percent ain't come free. You know what I mean? Like, I to... How many managers would go through that length? Imagine Lee and then that Spider's costume. Yeah, but sometimes you got to show that you're a team player. And I'll be real, just for disclaimer, I had no. I don't know if they, I don't know if this makes it any better for anyone else. It makes it better for me. I had no creative input, no direction, no. I just said yes to the. You said you'd do anything for money. Is, is, that, is that true? Anything for money? 
Nah, I'm joking. That was like a play on words because deep down it's not true because money actually isn't actually why I do any of this. I'll be real, it's generally not. So that was just a play on word, a personal joke between me and Eddie. Um, but nah, like I said, in this instance, the real reality is, yeah, that wouldn't have sounded as funny to say, is if a fighter is giving me a percent of their life by going into the ring and risking it, what do I look like saying no to chucking on a Spider-Man suit? Like, I'm, I'm comfortable in front of the camera. And his Jordans. And his Jordans. Yeah, his Jordans are quite nice. So I thought, hey, I was trying to get out with them on and say, oh, no, I'll bring them tomorrow. No, 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 no. Just some Air Forces tipped with blue. Blue on blue. I like it. I like the T-shirt as well. Um, can we talk business with you? you Mr. Frank Smith, who you're, is your real promoter, as, as you said. Is that what you said? Is your real promoter or old promoter? Well, it's kind of, you know, the 5 feet 5 stuff. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away because I'm not allowed to, but they might be the first loan. You're a flyweight. They might, huh? Who said it's for the first one? What? I'm trying to figure, yeah. out. Trying to figure out the weights and what weight you are. He's, he's going up There's a lot. heavy, I think. You're really heavy. Yeah. Well, I'm halfway there. <laughs> uh, so that's a little... So Monday, we're going to find out Monday because that's when this uh, press conference is for the 5v5. Are you going to be down in London for that 5v5? All I'm saying is, you know, people are looking, well, you know, Matchroom haven't got any... You know, we're, right now we're in a... Um, we're in a... Uh, ever-moving, ever-dynamic boxing world, a boxing scene. Things are happening that we never would have thought, so who knows? Smackdown version, it might be transfer season. So you've got me intrigued, mate, man. This is this is. You're dressed up as Spider-Man today. You're, you're, you're throwing little, your little treats at me every now and again here. Like I, I, I honestly don't. Easter eggs. I don't have a, honestly. To be honest, I don't have a clue what's going on. I don't know if you're being serious. You're kidding on, or you're actually are going to be in this five v five come June first. I mean, no one said no one said June first. What you're saying is only one leg. To be fair, this was your idea. Let's be honest. You you put that tweet out what three four years ago. Yeah, and, and Frank knows it was my idea. We're going to bring Frank back in. He knows this. this five Frank, v- five. Frank, he wants his percentage for the 5v5. Five 5v5 five. Five five was trademarked by me. I started, see? Confirmation. Who found that tweet? Who? Because that's something you can me. do. I, found, I knew I tweeted it, Andy. I knew I tweeted it six years ago. And I also knew... Oh, did I, find you? I, I also knew months before anyone mentioned it publicly, I was speaking to someone in this room really close to me. And someone else in another room of a big promoter, I had one and one, two promoters that I've worked with conveniently enough. I know everyone in the room all too well. And I said, you lot are missing a trick. And now look, the trick is not missed. So really, 2% as a board of directors for the 5 v 5 platform, <laughs> uh, Turkey I'll Shake, whenever you're ready. Cause I, 2% of a, a lot of money is a lot of money. <laughs> I'll, I'll cover the losses as well. I'll write about the losses, you know what I mean, just in case. But what is next for you, obviously, being a little bit serious because, I mean, You've shown after that, like Eddie Hearn said, if you get, make a good count yourself, you don't say no to a fight. You went over to Arizona. You fought the pound for pound best in your division um, in Bam Rodriguez. Um, you came up short, but you showed in that fight that you're not scared to get stuck in. You have heart. So what is next for you in terms of your next fight? Because, Sonny, you can't drop down a level. You maybe have to drop down a little level, but you want to stay in that world sort of scene, don't you? Do you know what? It's, it, it, it's hard because... I wasn't actually sure how the whole stoppage thing worked in boxing. So I didn't know that we didn't go to like the scorecards. You know what I mean? Yeah, you did. So it was, it's a bit confusing, so I'm still processing it now. I thought, look, we've, we've done enough today. You know, there's quite a few people here. I think they've had good action. We can probably do it again. So what we'll do is we'll go to the scorecards, but, but apparently it just meant I lost, which I thought was... You know, I was stupid, really. I don't know. I didn't know that this is what boxing meant. Usually, I just the final bells and they lift my hand up. I, I didn't know scoring or scorecards or whatever. You, like, you, you've never done. You've always done the twelve rounds. You've never done anything below, have you? You've had a couple of smaller rounds, uh, shorter rounds in your earlier career, but you were so used to going to the twelve rounds. No, but what people don't really realise is, is the act that on, on box right there's like four knockouts, but that's just you know like filing errors. You know when they don't actually happen, but. Someone went there on the first fight, so they just pull it how they heard someone say so. Yeah, they were final errors. Like, I just thought the final bell went as long as I was there. Like, yeah, and then obviously when the fight was getting a bit hard, I just thought, well, well, now's enough. So we'll go to the scorecards, and apparently that's not how it goes. So, yeah, kind of stupid if you ask me, but 
um, yeah, I've found out some more of the rules about boxing since then, and yeah, I think this year I'll, you know, yeah. You know, like, why, why work for 30, 36 minutes when you can work for six minutes? So are you going to try and make the fight early? Are you going to try and go out there and maybe show some of your punching power now? Oh, no, I don't know about that. I just thought, like, there was a lot of action that happened in the 27 minutes the fight went on for, and I thought the fans had enough, to be honest. I saw some people leaving, so I just thought, oh, well, it's, it's time. I thought, I thought the venue was closing, to be honest. It was crazy. Sorry, that is, that is crazy because I know I'm, you know your boxing inside and out. Like, you are a boxing encyclopedia. You know fighters, you know fighters' records, you know everyone in your division, everyone in your brother's division, everyone in his division, her division, but you didn't know that. I mean, that is, that is, that is an absolute mind-boggling scenario for me. I've had AI for a really long time. So I've just asked it questions. You don't tweet that stuff, that's AI. I've told people that for ages. I, I've told people for a long time that's not Sonny Edwards and they just don't believe me. It's crazy. Sonny, that is, listen, this is probably the, the quirkiest, weirdest interview I've ever done with you and, uh, and I'm enjoying it. I love when you talk <laughs> shit, <laughs> to be honest, mate, if it is shit. <laughs> that's very offensive, Andy. I, I don't know how you just... Sorry, nobody you you said. I, I'm a former world champion until I didn't realise how boxing was scored, so... I, now you know. I think, yes, now I know. So really, I think that should be turned to a no contest. I think, you know, if it was fighting for a WBC, it probably would have been no contest by now. Like, had I been filled in with the rules properly, it's just crazy. Honestly, who, who, whose job is it to give you the rule book? Like, who didn't give you the rule book? You know the ref comes in to the uh, um, changing room before the fight, usually with a couple of other people in suits, different attire. Um, and they usually say no behind the head, no biting, uh, clean fight, no... But they don't tell you anything else. Like, how am I supposed to know that here is the same rules as when it was before? Uh, Blame Eddie? I don't think it's really Eddie's fault. He's just kind of like the booking agent, really. You know what I mean? He's, uh, he doesn't score the fight. I was just, I, I was baffled when my hand didn't get raised. That's what I know. Okay. Uh, maybe I should... The, hopefully the board doesn't see this and give you a, make sure you go for your medical after this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, they might think like you've lost your mind a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked by that. And listen, if there's anyone to blame, we can't blame Frank or Eddie because that's probably the natural progression. You ship rolls downhill, so start at the top. No, but I think a lot of people do that. But the reality is, Frank and Eddie have actually been really nice to me since um, the since the confusion in America. Um, no, since that incident. Whatever happened. I thought, to be honest, if I, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought you won the fight. I thought I was actually turning there for a music event. That's what was crazy. Like, I thought I was just about to walk in as a spectator. That's what's even more crazy. You were there to see Taylor Swift. Yeah? Yes. Well, you were there to see Taylor Swift as well. I wish I was there, mate. I couldn't afford a ticket. Oh, yeah. Um, what, the, the budget not stretching? No. No, iPhone budget, okay. Um, That's how I feel, mate. They can't, they can't stretch me over there, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I know, yeah. That is crazy, but I just feel like, you know, it's a cost of living crisis right now, so we can't take things too personal. Um, you know, the fact that apparently after losing, I have to fight for free now, which is crazy. Um, yeah, snakes and ladders. You've, 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 you've gone up the ladders, you've hit a snake, you're all the way back down the bottom, you just got to roll the dice again. Yeah, I know. It's frustrating, but... That's why you're now managing fighters. And dressing up as Spider-Man and getting paid a uh, £300 day rate. <laughs> If that's, if that's what it costs to get you dressed up as anything, like I'll, I'll, I'll give you £500 to dress up as something, don't worry. Meet me in my room. <laughs> nah, fuck it, shut by the wind up. Listen, I went to... <laughs> come here, come here, Charlie. Come here, go. I want to talk about Charlie now, right? I want to talk about your brother because... <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, I want to talk about your, your brother Charlie on a more serious note. Um, he's back. He seems to be on the ball now. He's ready. I've seen a couple of interviews this week on his fight week. Uh, yeah. How excited for your brother to be, be back under there through them ropes? Yeah, I just, I just want to let everyone know I'm the better brother, still. You know what I mean? When he goes and knocks someone out on the weekend, I'm just letting everyone know now. <laughs> I'm still the star, you know what I mean? Um, in all seriousness, um, my brother's a hell of a fighter, has been since uh, I was knee high. Um, I've always looked up to him, uh, his dedication, his... Um, meticulous preparation for a fight he, he really does get over on it and it's nice to see I think genuinely and you know I hope it doesn't offend him me saying this finally good to see my brother with the, the eye of the tiger back and I don't think he's had it since becoming world champion I think um, once he got there you know 
priorities kind of maybe changed a little bit and mindsets maybe altered a little bit. But um, I think losing it all and kind of having it all in sense of career and kind of being forgotten about, not forgotten about, but just in nothing, uh, uh, nothing, you know, materialising or progressing in the, the form of results to talk about. Um, being back, headlining, Channel 5, title fight, former European champion. Perfect, to be honest. And I'm proud of him and I'm happy for him and he's done it all on his own accord. He's um, self-managing and uh, he's shown that sometimes, you know, having your own conversation rather than having a conversation from someone that no one speaks to is far, far better in getting things done. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna, I'm literally in Manchester now. I'm gonna be in um, London tomorrow, my brother's fight, back in Manchester tomorrow, uh, the day after for uh, Brandon, Scott and Jordan Flynn um, and then yeah uh, I've got, got to say you, Charlie's self-managing, why did he not come to you because you've proved, you're a proven manager now, you, 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 you produce for your fighters why did he not come to you Look, that conversation he, that could be had because he's smart <laughs> because he's smart really, he knows in me he's got a a free advisor, he's got an untapped resource and someone that will help him and support him in any which way that I can. Um, at the end of the day, he's my brother, my big brother at that as well. So, like I said, if you ever wanted, you know, to put the old Paul Bearer and uh, The Undertaker duo back together, um, like when we was kids, then, then, then we could definitely, but uh, I'll always be there flying uh, the flag of my last name, my family name. Even at the times that me and my brother are, you know, our energies are apart from each other and we're not friends, uh, I will always still push. My family name means a hell of a lot to me. I want it to mean uh, a lot to my kids coming through. Um, so, yeah, I will always support and push my brother because he's a career fighter, he's a great fighter. People forget how easy he's looked 95% of his boxing career and only against Casemiro and Martinez, two world champions, two very, very good fighters, two very well-known fighters, has he ever looked anything nearly competitive he's absolutely tranced everyone else in the boxing ring so the ball's rolling he's got the eye of the tiger like I said and yeah I'm really looking forward to the next chapter of his career um, you know it's what it should be you know at one point he was Sky I was BT now I'm the zone he's Channel 5 it's what we should be we should be bouncing off each other um, you know if I weren't actually just starting camp uh, for my loan appearance uh, <coughs> my, for my next fight appearance I would have um, been down it all week with my brother because that was the original plan. I was going to be, and I was going to still come back for this. Uh, but because now I'm back in training, a bit more serious uh, this week. Yeah, I've had to miss out on, on a couple of the fight, but I'll be there down there to support my big brother tomorrow. Good stuff, good stuff. I won't keep you much longer, uh, Sonny, because I'm going to have a hard work title in this, uh, this 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 video when it goes up, man. This has been the most unique, quirkiest interview, but I've enjoyed it, mate. I'm glad I saw the real Sonny Edwards. I, I like that. Thank you. No, no, no worries. I've been, I've been hiding for a long time, and uh, this was my, this was my coming out party as Spider-Man. I love it, mate. Thanks very much, Sonny, and uh, good luck to Charlie tomorrow. Thanks, mate. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.